Singapore cannot shut down totally and absolutely in the face of haze. I mean, for example, no matter how bad the haze is, we will still need the police force, we will still need the people producing water, we will still need to clear our waste, we will still need security agencies. So there cannot be a single hard stop that the entire Singapore grinds to a halt. It can't be. But having said that, we need to prioritize the health and safety of our people. And it is important to understand, therefore, that there are actually four factors at play. First, what is the level of pollution? How high it is? In other words, what is the PSI telling us? The second risk factor is how prolonged the haze is. Because again, the medical evidence shows that certainly prolonged, I mean, they say prolonged, they in fact usually mean months or years. Right. How prolonged the episode of increased pollution is. The third factor is the health status of the person. For instance, that's why we have vulnerable groups. People with pre-existing heart or lung conditions need to take extra precautions. And the fourth factor is the level of activity. So basically, if you are outdoors and you are exerting yourself, you're going to breathe in more air. And if the air is polluted, you're going to breathe in more pollutants. So the question is, for any individual, you have to consider all these four factors, right? How high, how long, how active, and your own current health status. Now, in order to protect people, they need two things. One is they need information. Hence, our PSI and our advisories have to be clear, accurate, and definite. But having said that, we know from experience now, I mean, certainly say in the last year and even last week, that it can be very volatile. And uh, we will be publishing hourly data which will show that in the space of an hour, the numbers can double or treble. Similarly, the haze in, at one measuring point can be very different, can be double or treble the measurement in another point at the same time. So we have, therefore, to learn to cope with this volatility. So that's why we have come out, the, the, the general theme in all the advice that both uh, MOH and MOM has put out is that the key thing is to reduce the level of activity. So you cannot totally come to a stop, but you can make adjustments, reduce physical exertion, especially outdoors. And if you're doing essential work and it's going to be prolonged over several hours, uh, so for instance, if it's at a hazardous level, that means uh, more than 300, a mask may be needed to reduce the inflow of pollutants into that person doing essential work. But we are telling employers, and we're putting employers on notice, right now, this is a good period Please use this time now to prepare your plans. What do we want you to do? We want you to identify who are your vulnerable employees. We want you to work out adjustments to the work schedule so that when the air quality is not so good, you can decrease the level of physical exertion needed. Thirdly, we want you to have all the equipment necessary. So for instance, if you need to get masks, this is a good time to go and stock up on masks because there are lots available and the onus is on the employer to deploy the employee in a safe way and to provide all the necessary protection. So we believe that by making sure everyone understands what is going on and everyone takes appropriate precautions, we can protect each other and also to remind employers that they have an extra duty to be extra careful about their employees.